Hello everybody, it's the Vertical Sandwich. Welcome back to Book Reviews. So today, Mort, the fourth book in the Discworld series. Now, this book launches the death plot lines, where death is a main character. And, uh, okay, <laughs> like, read the back here. Death comes to us all. When he came to Mort, he offered him a job. After being assured that being dead was not compulsory, Mort accepted. However, he soon found that romantic longings did not mix easily with the responsibility of being Death's apprentice. She does this. This is the thing she does to the couch. I'm going to leave this in. You know I'm going to leave this in? I'm going to leave this in because we're dealing with comedy books. We're dealing with comedy books. Okay, comedy books. Yeah, comedy books. She's cute, right? So, I mean, like, it doesn't... It doesn't bother anybody if I just do this for a minute and just go like, hi, this is Pixie. She's like nine months old now. So like, and she's trouble. She's just trouble. Down you go. I mean, I know you're going to jump right back up. <laughs> you done? I might have put this pillow up here. <laughs> you don't put the pillow over. You kind of move back up. <laughs> Stop it. Alright. So, anyway. So, this boy Mort is awkward. He's dangly. He can't find his place in the world. And he goes to, like, a career fair. Where people pick apprentices. And nobody picks him. And he says, no, this ends at midnight. I'm going to stick around. I'm going to see this through. I'm going to do this. And at midnight, Death shows up. And offers him a job being his apprentice. And he accepts. Like, because he doesn't have to be dead. Right? Being dead is not compulsory to work with death. You can be a living person and, you know, take people to their eternal rest. So, um, yeah, so that's, uh, so, um, Plus it came to a halt on the frosty cobbles and spun the boy around to face him. You're really going to have to do better than this, he said. Don't you understand, boy? If you're going to listen to anything in this world, then you've got to listen. I'm your father telling you these things. Mort looked down at his father's face. He wanted to say a lot of things. He wanted to say how much he loved him, how worried he was. He wanted to ask what his father really thought he'd just seen and heard. He wanted to say that he felt as though he'd stepped on a molehill and found out it was really a volcano. He wanted to ask what nuptials meant. What he actually said was, yeah, thank you, I'd better be going, I'll try and write you a letter. There's bound to be someone passing who can read it to us, said Lezik. Goodbye, Mort, he blew his nose. Goodbye, Dad, I'll come back to visit, said Mort. Death coughed tactfully, although it sounded like a pistol crack of an inch's beam full of death to watch feel. We had better be going, he said. Hop up, Mort. As Mort scrambled behind the ornate silver saddle, Death leaned down and shook Lezik's hand. Thank you, he said. He's a good lad at heart, said Lesek. A bit dreamy, that's all. I suppose we were all young once. Death considered this. No, he said. I don't think so. He gathered up the reins and turned the horse towards the rim road. From his perch behind the black robed figure, Mort waved desperately. Lesek waved back. Then as the horse and its two riders disappeared from view, he lowered his hand and looked at it. The handshake. It had felt strange, but somehow he couldn't remember exactly why. Mort listened to the clatter of stone under the horse's hooves. Then there was the soft thud of packed earth as they reached the road, and then there was nothing at all. He looked down and saw the landscape spread out below him. The night etched with moonlight silver. As he fell off, the only thing he'd hit was air. He redoubled his grip on the saddle. Then Death said, Are you hungry, boy? Yes, sir. The words came straight from his stomach without the intervention of his brain. Death nodded and reined in the horse. It stood on the air, the great circular panorama of the disc glittered below it. Here and there a city was an orange glow in the warm seas nearer the rim. There was a hint of phosphorescence. In some of the deep valleys, the trapped daylight of the disc, which is slow and slightly heavy. Like, daylight is actually slower than light on the disc. It's, it, it's explained in a note on this page, but I'm not going to read the note was evaporating like silver stream, steam. 
but it was outshone by the glow that rose towards the stars from the room itself. Vast streamers of light shimmered and glittered around the, across the night. Great golden walls surrounded the world. It's beautiful, said Mort softly. What is it? The sun is under the disk, said Death. Is it like this every night? Every night, said Death. Nature's like that. Doesn't anyone know? Me, you, the gods. Good, is it? Gosh! Death leaned over the saddle and looked down at the kingdoms of the world. I don't know about you, he said, but I could murder a curry. <laughs> like, so, like, there's some really interesting aspects of Death. He has a real horse. It's named Binky, and he loves it. Like, that's the thing about Death. He has a stepdaughter. He has Mort. He has a butler. Um, he lives in a space outside of time and space, like where he does all of his work, I guess. Uh, and, like, one of the things about this is that there are great things that are just, like, here's the deal, right? In, in, in Mort, for the first time, Terry Pratchett takes a premise that is on its face ridiculous. It's the most ridiculous premise, like, that he's come up with so far, and he just lays it down and then runs with it. He doesn't... People are telling Mort throughout the book. They're like, you can't be Death's apprentice. That's not the way Death works. Death is a thing you are. It's not a job you can take. Right? But, like, that doesn't matter to anybody involved in, like, the whole... And people are, like, saying it. People are saying it out loud. Like, how can you possibly just be like, the apprentice of the Grim Reaper. Like, that doesn't make any sense. And it doesn't, but, like, that doesn't stop an entire cast of characters from kind of tiptoeing around it and dealing with it. And then the funny thing is, is like, one of the most brilliantly beautiful parts about it is that, like, Death is really good at his job. He's Death. He comes for everything that dies. That's his job. That's what he does. Um, but, like, uh, there are aspects of death that are incredibly, um, kind of ordinary, right? Like, he has this horse and he really loves it. Um, and at some point, like, he decides he's going to take a vacation, like, and decides to take up fly fishing. Like, he just decides to take up fly fishing. And, like, these are things that are just, they're beautifully comedic on their face, but, like, Pratchett just... Pratchett is just, he's seamlessly devoted to these ideas. To the ideas that, like, death has the capacity to sometimes approximate being, you know, like a normal person. Or just, like, a guy who, this dog, I know the dog is out of camera, but the dog is doing the most ridiculously distracting things on the face of the planet. And I didn't hide one toy this week. And that was my bad. Um, but yeah, so, like, Pratchett is just absolutely just amazing with kind of this premise that this kid is, I mean, the kid, and that's the thing, Mort is useless, right? He's like a nice kid who's trying to do the best job he can. But I want you to think about, like, your first job, right? And, like, how much you kind of fumbled and, like, didn't know how to deal with authority and just, like, wanted to make people happy. And how badly, you know, like, how you didn't know how to do anything. You had to learn. And then some things you still did wrong. And some things you got to hang up. And, like, Pratchett takes that and beautifully puts it into Mort. Who's, the job Mort is learning is how to be the Grim Reaper. Like, it's amazing. It's absolutely and totally amazing. It's super believable. Like, and not from the point of view that you believe that death is like the personification and like a thing that can show up in a job fair and give a kid a job. But if that was the case, this reads like it would like it would play out, right? Like, yeah. And 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 it's fantastic. It's fantastic. It's laugh out loud, loud funny. Like there are just these things about it. Like there's everything wonderful about like a teenage kid just being awkward about like his place in life and his job, where his place in life is hanging out with the Grim Reaper and his job is assistant to the Grim Reaper. It's so good. It's so it's that's the thing, is that 
That's the wonderful thing about Mork. It's not the Pratchett, like, it's not that this book is going to particularly make you feel a bunch of emotional things, and, like, some Pratchett novels will do that. Like, Witches Abroad literally made me cry. It was amazing. Um, that's not what Mort is about. What Mort is about is marrying two so incongruent things together in a way that just is absolutely beautifully hilarious all the way through. He's just, it's, it's, it's mind numbing. It is mind numbing that somebody sat down and went, what if an awkward teenage boy became death's assistant? And then went, I think I could make that a great novel. And then they did. They just made that a great novel that seriously is just, it never wavers. It never wavers from that premise that, like, Mort is just this goofy, kind of, like, insecure kid. And again, he just, like, works with the Grim Reaper. And the Grim Reaper is incapable of, 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 of grasping what's going on at all. Like, he doesn't get, he doesn't understand what it's like to not know things, or, like, not, you know, like, be worried about things. Like, he's an infallible natural force. He's the embodiment, he's the personification of a thing that we all have to face, like taxes. And so, like, there's a lot of that, too, where, like, Morton is clearly looking for this kind of guidance and father figure, and he can't get it from this skeleton in a robe who, like, doesn't understand what emotions are. Like... No, oh, just, just, ah, uh, read, I mean, seriously, it's, if you, if you are listening to me and you are reading Discworld novels, and you get to this one and you don't like it, don't read any more Discworld novels, because, like, this is a great one, this is a fantastic novel, this is just a, solid, from start to finish, it's just so good, and so full of surprises, and so amazing, and just so genuinely, like, funny and then suspenseful. But, and, like, it's off the wall, but then, like, you, you actually get invested. You really care about Mort, and you care about the other characters in the novel. And then, like, what happens when he messes up? And kind of the takes on death and religion that are in here are amazing. They're just amazing. There's, there's so much good kind of Pratchett thumbing his nose at the conventions of being a human that, like, it makes this feel a lot deeper than it is, but then on the surface, it's just a really good, funny book. So, like, I can't say enough good things about this book. Like, this book was, like, this book, I bought, I bought all ten. I bought ten Discworld books, because I got a great deal on them. And I didn't think I was going to ever read all ten of them. I thought I might read the first, you know, whatever. And I got to this one and went, like, oh, I can't stop until these books get bad now, because this was amazing. And now again, I'm on book... I've, I've bought up to 18 now. I have bought up to book 18 sitting in a room. And I'm on book 14. So, and if I get to book 16, I will order like the next eight or something. Because the, the series is just blowing blowing my mind. It's just so good. But this? Oh, this is unbelievably good. Um, and Death as a character is amazing. Like Pratchett's kind of... Pratchett's uh, construction of, of the Grim Reaper is unbelievable. Like, at the way he describes, the way he talks, the way that, um, which, by the way, this should be said, because uh, you can see here, Death's dialogue, and maybe, I don't know if you can see this, um, but Death's dialogue is always in something called, yeah, we'll get it right under my hand there. Um, Death's dialogue is always in something called, uh, called small caps. And so he doesn't have, uh, he doesn't have quotation marks or anything. All this. And, uh, that's what they tweeted out when Terry Pratchett died. Was, they tweeted out, like, a quote about, finally, you must walk hand in hand with me. All in that type thing. Which is correct. Um, so, yes, I'm being bitten. I am being bitten. She's biting me. Biting me. I feed her. Alright. So, since you featured so heavily in this book, or in this review, maybe you should say goodbye to the people. Or no, you're just going to continue being you. Um, so, yeah, I, I, I knew I was going to rant and rave about how good this book is. I really love this book. I really think this book is amazing. 
and I really love the Discworld series. So I don't know if we're going to be doing another Discworld book after this particular one, um, because, uh, but we will be doing more Discworld books because I can't put them down. So if you want to hear me talk about, I don't remember what, I think Sorcery might be book five. Uh, and then after that we might get to, I don't know, get, like guards, guards, moving pictures. There's so many of them. There are so many Discworld books that I have read. Uh, so yeah, um, I'll see you for whatever is next week. Bye everyone.